The past couple of months, investigative journalist Kim Dvorak has been looking into the death of journalist Michael Hastings in Los Angeles. This morning, she has some new information into what Hastings was working on just before he died in a fiery car explosion. Now, of note, the Hastings article is set to come out posthumously in a couple of weeks, we have learned. Good morning, Kim. Nice to see you this morning. Good morning. Thank so you. So you have new information about what Mr. Hastings was working on. Yeah, I believe we have some uh, sound on tape here from his wife on CNN earlier this week. Okay, yeah, she, she made an appearance, um, Michael Hastings' widow. Um, see if we can roll that. I have no doubt that he was pursuing a hot story. He always had at least five hot stories right. going. That was, that was Michael. Perfect. Um, yeah, I believe um, you know the the context of uh, the discussion here is that Michael was working on a number of stories, one of which was centered on now CIA director John Brennan um, when he was the czar of counterterrorism for President Obama. Um, he obviously was the architect of a lot of the drone strikes, Terror Tuesdays, some of these issues, and Hastings being an advocate for open information, as his wife uh, goes on to state in the interview on CNN, that Mr. Uh, Hastings you know, wanted to get this information out and found it um, interesting um, background. So he, this article is going to come out, we understand, in a couple of weeks, and it's going to yeah. be specifically about Mr. Brennan, is that correct? Correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. And um, a few weeks ago, some sources um, that I've been working with on this story and others gave me an email um, that surfaced through WikiLeaks, and that, of course, was an illegal hack. So we want to state that out front that mm -hmm. you know a lot of people on one side will say that this is, this could be altered or whatnot, but it did spark a response from the actual um, CIA. Um, this week as well. Okay, so here's the emails. Now, this is um, from actually from Hastings' colleague, correct? You got this from yes. um, one of his co workers. Yes, at uh, Project And DM. explain who Mr. Burton is, please. Mr. Burton is the now president of Stratfor, which is a major defense contractor for the U.S. government. Okay, and here is the email that says Brennan is behind the witch hunts of investigative journalists learning information from inside the Beltway sources, and it goes on to say, note there is specific tasker from the uh, White House to go after anyone printing materials negative to the Obama agenda. And this is from a gentleman, um, you say, that has defense contracts in Washington? Yes, indeed he does. And this email was directed towards Mr. Brennan, which prompted uh, San Diego Six and myself to reach out to the CIA just to get confirmation, in which they did. They promptly returned um, emails and a phone call to ensure that you know, they, you know they, they knew Mr. Hastings, they were saddened by his death, they were aware that he was working on stories, and that they had a very cordial working relationship. And we have that email from the CIA, um, if we could bring that up and show exactly what, what the response was. Here's the media spokesperson from the CIA, Todd Ebitz. And there you can see, without commenting on information disseminated by WikiLeaks, any suggestion that Director Brennan has ever attempted to infringe on constitutionally protected press freedoms is offensive and baseless. So there you have it. You have both sides of the story, <coughs> and we let the viewers decide what they, they want to um, believe in, in all of this, and we'll wait and see what's going on with Mr. Hastings' story when it comes out in Rolling Stone. It should be pointed out that, that Mr. Hastings' widow did uh, make a television appearance saying that any suggestion that this um, was intended, his death was intended, um, is not correct, that, that his death was a tragic... Um, just a tragedy. That there was no malfeasance yeah. involved. Do you? Yeah, and she went on also to explain <coughs> that the LAPD has an active investigation. She's waiting with the rest of us to find out the specific details with that, and we're hoping to get information from a toxicology report that should be forthcoming here in the next maybe month or so, maybe six weeks. It's mm -hmm. been been quite a while. So I believe that that will will have a lot more answers. Um, it, but the, uh, the other piece of new information we have is when we saw the um, surveillance video last week, the black and white, um, there was a, um, a, a little bit of question as to how fast the car may have been traveling. We spoke with a San Diego State uh, professor here, and he stated that it's his belief that when you do the calculation, the time and distance, the car was traveling roughly 34, 35 miles per hour when it 
hit the tree, so okay. much slower than we thought. Well, I know you've gotten a lot of comments on your reporting on this story particularly, and uh, we appreciate all the work that you've been doing. Absolutely. Um, trying to uncover some some facts. Yeah, and you know, we, we couldn't do this without all the viewers. The tremendous amount of emails we've received are just, it's overwhelming. We read them. We do get tips. So check the KD report and San Diego 6 and we'll have the latest. Thank you. Okay, Kim. Thank you very much.